For almost 30 years, the Eurostar has been connecting people from the heart of London to major European cities in mainland Europe at speeds of 300 km per hour via the underwater channel tunnel. Most services now operate using a new fleet of E320 Valero trains, which admittedly I haven't yet tried out. So, in this video, I'll be checking out Eurostar's standard premier offering, taking a ride from Paris, the French capital, back home to London, the English capital, following a relaxing week off in mainland Europe. Now let's get this show on the rails. Bonjour à tous. We begin today's journey at the world-famous Paris Gare du Nord station, officially known as Paris Nord, right in the heart of Paris, France, within the 10th arrondissement. Perhaps the most notable thing you see upon arriving is the Angel Bear sculpture, designed by Richard Texier in 2015 as a reminder to the 200 million plus passengers passing through this station each year of the continued impacts of climate change on polar bears. I must admit, I really do love this station, Everything from the grand roof design to the overarching pillars are just fantastic. The station, having opened originally in 1846, is the busiest railway station in Europe, handling circa 214 million passengers a year and is served by a multitude of operators, ranging from TGV high-speed trains to SNCF regional and suburban services under the Transilian and TER brands. Paris Nord is principally known for its international links to not only the UK, but also other countries in mainland Europe through Thales, who serve Belgium, Germany and the Netherlands from this station. The Eurostar platforms are located right next to the Thales platforms, which is rather fitting considering both operators recently finalised a merger deal back in March 2022. The station also has a large array of shops and eateries, some more prestige than local to France, whilst others, such as the five guys in the background, not so much. Right, it's now time for us to head to the Eurostar platforms, which are located towards the east of the main station concourse. Eurostar recommends to arrive around an hour and a half ahead of departure to prevent issues during the boarding process, which I'll be going through shortly. Gates close around half an hour prior to the book departure of the train, so make sure not to arrive too late. If you do find yourself being slightly delayed, however, the Eurostar entrance is conveniently located right next to one of the entrances for the Paris Metro and RER. Before we begin boarding, let's briefly take in the grand view of Paris Nord before undertaking the traditional British activity of queuing. Eurostar queues are infamously known for being rather long and frequent, and this will be the first of many we'll experience during the boarding process. The boarding process begins with scanning your ticket on the barcode reader to enter the barriers. Tickets can either be printed, offered as paper tickets, or, the option I used, as an e-ticket. We then have a passport check done, both by the French and British authorities, owing to the UK not being part of the European Schengen area. And finally, following a brief and quick security check, we have now arrived in the Eurostar departure lounge. From the lounge, we have an amazing view of Gare du Nord, including both members of Eurostar's fleet. The last time I travelled with Eurostar was eight years ago on the train to the left, a Class 373 TGV TMST, or E300, dating from 1994. Today, I'll be travelling on one of the newer E320 trains, built by Siemens as part of their Valero family between 2011 and 2018. Unlike the E300s, which have 18 carriages, the E320s have 16 carriages, and I'm based in Coach 15 for this trip, one of the three standard Premier carriages. Consequently, I'll be remaining here in Lounge A, which is for coaches 11 to 18, regardless of the set. Coaches 1 to 10 have to board from Lounge B. There's plenty to do here, including making one last purchase at the duty-free shops ahead of the trip. And, if you're in Business Premier or part of Eurostar's Carte Blanche membership, have access to the Business Premier Lounge. Like me, however, most of you will most likely not be spending that much money. So, just get yourself a tasty snack from the cafes and duty-free shops from the money you saved instead. I also managed to get a great seat to admire the view over Gare du Nord. My brief break was cut short, however, as before I could take a bite out of the delicious Ferrero Rocher bar, it was time to board. As can be seen, boarding is rather chaotic, although this isn't aided by the fact that I'm travelling at the Christmas period. Fortunately, the crowds moved on rather fast. As we board our train, 
now's a good time to talk more about the E320. Designated as the Class 374 in the UK, the trains were ordered by Eurostar to enhance its fleet and expand its operations, owing to the improved flexibility provided which the existing TMST failed to offer. The E320 introduction has enabled Eurostar to begin operating direct trains in 2018 from London to Amsterdam via Rotterdam, and hopefully, following the merger with Thales, will enable further destinations to be served in the coming years. I must admit, I am a fan of the new Eurostar livery, as it really does fit in with both their corporate image and role in connecting the UK with mainland Europe. However, you really can't beat the classics. The last hurdle before boarding is to show one of the onboard train managers my ticket, so I can be allocated my seat. Reservations are compulsory on Eurostar, and any seats must be booked prior to departure. Seats can also be changed either on the Eurostar website or at the reception office before undergoing security at your request, provided the train isn't too busy. And after wrestling through the army of passengers, I finally made it to my seat, number 65. Weirdly enough, directly opposite seat 61. But before we depart for London, let's have a look at our route for today. Starting from Paris Nord, upon departure, we ride through the northern Paris suburbs and Ile-de-France region before making our way up the LGV Nord, the high-speed line running up to Lille and Calais, to the site of the Channel Tunnel. We then make our way across the tunnel under the English Channel over to Kent, where we join the High Speed One line to make our way into our final destination, into London St Pancras International. Our scheduled arrival time into London is 1.30pm UK time. Right, about time we finally left France and made our way to the UK. So, let's get rolling. Having travelled up to Paris on one of the older TMST sets, I was rather disappointed to find the seats on the E320s are a lot less comfortable, however, they still do the job nicely. My seat has a standard UK 3-pin power socket, as well as a USB socket. These do vary by seat however, a seat 61 opposite me for example had a continental European one, so great to see Eurostar including both. I found the legroom on the E320 to be whilst not as great as a TMST, still fairly adequate, especially for the premium offering. This was aided further by the generous seat recline. To operate this, just pull and hold the lever and slide your bum forwards and backwards as appropriate. I'm at a table seat, meaning there's a foldable section that can be extended or put away as appropriate. This came in handy for my meal offered in standard premier, with more on that later. At the end of each seat is a foldable armrest. This also includes the window side, which normally doesn't operate. However, given the plug socket is under here, I feel like it's necessary in this case. A very conveniently located reading light 
can be seen towards the left facing the direction of travel. Seat numbers are also located at each seat and are accompanied by a dot matrix display. However, this did not appear to be working for this trip. Located just below the seat reservation display and number are sturdy coat hangers for the placement of coats and bags. And finally, there's a window blind available. Interestingly, it doesn't completely block out the view and instead simply reduces the sunlight, which I find a lot better as this means the views over the LG V Nord can still be enjoyed. The LG V Nord is one of the high speed lines in France which runs from Paris all the way to the Channel Tunnel portal on the French side at Calais. The maximum speed on the line is 300 km per hour, however the E320s, as suggested by the name, are capable of doing 320 km per hour as per the limit of many other European high speed lines. Right, time for a wander around our train. I'm currently in the second standard premium carriage of the three on board. Immediately exiting my carriage is a wheelchair accessible toilet, which I'll have a look at later on. As mentioned previously, standard premier is on the rear three carriages of this 16 carriage train. 10 are standard class accommodation and the remaining three are for those on a business premier ticket. However, there is no difference in the seats, the difference is being a fully flexible ticket, a larger meal, access to the business premier lounge and priority boarding. Heading into standard class, we can see that seating is in a 2 plus 2 configuration with tables, which appears to be incredibly busy, so just as well I upgraded to standard premier for this trip. There's also plenty of luggage racks, both overhead and towards the end of the carriage, which appear to be very well used. In carriages where there weren't wheelchair accessible toilets, there was a standard toilet in at least every carriage, so it's good to see Eurostar using the space on this 16 carriage train wisely. We're now in carriage 8, which is where I'm going to end the walkthrough as we've reached the next stop to check out in more detail, Café Metropole. This is Eurostar's onboard dining car, with a reasonable selection of light refreshments available, including cake and both soft and alcoholic drinks. The ambience, as with the rest of the train, is great, however, I did find the menu to be a bit pricey for my liking. I've put the menu up here, so feel free to pause the video and make a judgement for yourself. I also remembered that I'm in standard premiere for this trip, meaning I returned to a complimentary light meal which is included in the ticket price. The meal was nice, although the pineapple chunks didn't look very fresh at first glance. We are currently about to speed through Lille Europe, a major hub on the LGV Nord that was opened in 1993 to provide international links in northern France with Eurostar and Talos International Services. Eurostar services to and from Paris, however, don't stop at this station, with their services to Amsterdam and Brussels regularly making stops here instead, as well as the infrequent service to Disneyland Paris, which will be coming to this channel soon, so do subscribe so you don't miss it. Services to and from Paris Nord to Lille are instead provided by TGV. The final thing to check out on the E320 is the toilet. As it's the closest one to my carriage, I've gone for the PRM specified toilet for this one. Door locked, we can begin. I'm honestly amazed with how clean this toilet is. The TMST on my way up, whilst it was clean, was not as clean as this. Kudos Eurostar. The soap is well filled. The tap flows very well. And the dryer works as it should. This means that overall, the toilet gets a huge thumbs up from me. Right, back to my seat now as the channel tunnel approaches. Calais Fleton is our penultimate stop to pass on the approach to the channel tunnel. This station was previously served by Eurostar, however they have since ceased to call here since the Covid-19 pandemic, owing to them focusing more on their core route stations, and at the time of recording no resumption date had been announced. All services are now served by TER regional services and TGV high speed services. The passing of this station also indicates we are close to the channel tunnel. This is also indicated by the large amount of fencing, an attempt to resolve the illegal immigration issues through the tunnel. The channel tunnel is a superb piece of engineering, with plans for its construction emerging as early as 1802. The eventual successful project, led by Eurotunnel, 
began construction in 1988 and opened in May 1994, with several Class 319 electric trains making excursions through the tunnel from Sandling, Kent, on the day of opening with invited guests, two making it all the way to France as the first passenger carrying trains to do so. We also now begin to slow down as we enter the tunnel, which is reflected with its maximum speed of 100 miles an hour or 160 kilometers per hour. And yes, there is just about a signal in here. The channel has two tunnels, one in each direction, both of which are linked by a piston relief duct to manage air pressure changes caused by the fast train movement. There is also a service tunnel between the two tunnels for the provision of maintenance and the evacuation of passengers in the event of an emergency. The channel also runs 75 metres below sea level, which is pretty amazing if you ask me. Each tunnel also has a length of 50.45 kilometres, which is approximately 31 miles, and takes 20 minutes to traverse the full length, but I'll let the E320 passenger information screens cover this little fact. Sadly, the inside of the channel does not look like a scene from Finding Nemo, and as it lasts for 20 minutes, let's skip to the end of our journey through it, and enjoy a frosty welcome back to the UK. Don't forget to adjust for the one hour timing difference. Emerging from the channel sees us in Folkestone, Kent. As well as Eurostar services, the channel is also served by the motor rail shuttle service, the shuttle, between Calais and Folkestone, with the tracks towards the Folkestone terminal being seen towards the left. Minutes later, we are seen speeding over Ashford International on one of the many high-speed one viaducts, another former stop of the Eurostar that was withdrawn for the same reason as Calais. Again, there is no expected date for the return of Eurostar services at Ashford, despite the works done in late 2019 to make the platform suitable for the E320s. The HS1 between the Channel and London is currently Britain's only high-speed line, built to cope with the higher speeds and E320 loading gauges used by Eurostar. Southeastern also operate domestic high-speed services to Kent on the line, which I've reviewed before. The maximum speed on the line is 186 miles an hour, which we experience travelling over the Medway Viaduct and River Medway. And as we pass the Dartford crossing, I'll draw my conclusions. Overall, I had a fantastic experience with Eurostar. The service was great, and even though the ride on the E320s was not as great as a TMST, they're fantastic trains, and I'm sure you'll enjoy travelling on them as much as I have. I also find it amazing how you can get from the centre of Paris to London in just over two hours, thanks to high-speed rail, the channel and friendship between nations. One last thing to note is that we passed Stratford International on the approach to London, a high-speed one white elephant owing to no international services ever having been called here. Well, that's it from me guys, and welcome to London. And that's it guys, the perfect end to a perfect trip. Have you ever travelled with Eurostar before? What have your experiences with them been? Please do let me know in the comments below. I'd also like to say a massive thank you for the support this year. It has been incredibly humbling to see the channel's vast growth and I could not have done it without every view, like and subscription. On that note, please give the video a like if you enjoyed it as that further aids the channel's growth. If you're new to the channel and want to see more content such as this, why not consider subscribing as well as enabling notifications as I upload new videos every Friday at 5pm. Right, time for me to get a well-deserved rest now and I'd like to wish you all a happy new year. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in 2023.